Hey there guys, how's it going? Back with another fantasy fight to talk about. So, in light of Alexander Povetkin's um, recent knockout victory over Dillian White last weekend, as I record this video, um, I wanted to talk about a another fantasy fight. Now, David Hay, I was listening to an interview with David Hay the other night where he was talking about um, what happened, obviously, to Dillian White, and he was giving his two cents on it. And uh, David Hay was very critical of the referee, weirdly enough. Uh, somebody actually pointed out in my comment section uh, what David Hay had been saying. You know, he was insinuating that it was a premature stoppage, that the referee shouldn't have waved it off, that he should have given um, Dillian White the count, um, like the referee did to Tyson Fury against Wilder. Um, I disagree completely with that because Dillian White um, was was clearly out before he hit the canvas. It wasn't like a knockdown where he was down and he was trying to get back up. No, he was he was sleeping. He was flat out on the canvas. I don't think that Tyson Fury, when he was dropped by Wilder, first of all, it wasn't as dramatic a knockdown. Um, it was a, a punch that came at him straight. It wasn't a punch that snapped his head back and literally had him sleeping on the canvas. No, Fury was just hit with a straight right. He was dazed, but he was clearly awake. I don't think he was unconscious. Dillian White, on the other hand, was unconscious for some time after going down, you know, they had the the paramedics in and all that. So I, I completely disagree with David Hay. I think the referee um, did. I, I, I sorry, I think he did the right thing. Yeah, I think I think the referee did the right thing to um, to 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 stop the fight when he did. So yeah, I completely disagree with David Hay. I don't know why he's complaining about it personally, but it, it really got me thinking because David Hay. I remember a long time ago, and I don't know if you guys remember this, but I remember when David Hay was the WBA champion, and I believe it was when David Hay fought, um, when, he, when he fought Audley Harrison, remember when he fought Audley Harrison in London, and I, I can remember quite specifically before Audley Harrison was confirmed as the opponent, um, I remember there being talks that Povetkin was a potential opponent for Hay, because Povetkin was, of course, up there at the time in the WBA rankings. You know, that was when he was um, approaching a title shot. And, um, yeah, he, he obviously got the title shot about a year later against um, a, a, against Chagayev, of course, um, when when Vladimir Klitschko beat Hay and, and the title, you know, the regular title went vacant and whatnot. But I remember there being talks that Povetkin was going to be Hay's opponent. And and obviously with it turning out to be um, Audley Harrison, that was a bit disappointing because Audley Harrison just wasn't deserving of a title shot at all. And um, I always thought personally that, and, and, and again, a lot of people at the time did not agree because, you know, the, the sort of narrative in the heavyweight division at the time was you had the Klitschkos and then you had David Hay, who was sort of the wild card, you know, David Hay, who was the guy who was the saviour of the division, and he was the guy who was going to just go in there and just wreck the whole division, and, you know, he was the only guy who, who could potentially sort of liberate the division, you know, that was the, <laughs> over here in the UK, that was kind of the narrative at the time, was that it was a stale division, where the clutch goes on top, dominating, and um, and, and everyone was, was crap, and, and there was just this one guy, David Haight, who was going to liberate the division. But I always believed at the time, and, and I was very young back then, we're talking back when I was, what, 16, 17, um, I, I, I believed back then that Alexander Povetkin would have beaten David Hay. And uh, let's talk about it. So Alexander, po Alexander Povetkin versus David Hay in a fantasy fight. How do I think this one would go? Do you know, guys, th there's, a, there's a few fights that I um, want to compare this one to. A few fights on David Hay's resume that I think you should look at if you want to have a, a clear example and a clear idea of how this fight would have gone. One of the fights I want you guys to look at is David Hayes' fight against Geocab Fragomeni. Uh, I, I think that's how you pronounce that guy's name, I forget. But yeah, that was one of David Hayes' cruiserweight fights. If you want to look at that fight, uh, and, and Fragomeni was one of these short, stocky, like muscular, um, come-forward pressure fighters who would just get on the inside and rough you up and stuff like that. And I want you guys to look very closely at that fight, right? Look very closely at David Hayes' fight against um, Carl Thompson, which was his first defeat, one of his other fights at Cruiserweight. Look at David Hayes' fight against um, against John McMormick, which was, again, that was a, another important fight for David Hay. It was the fight where he won the Cruiserweight title. And 
lastly, take a look at David Hayes' fight against Derek Chisora. All four of those fights I want you guys to look at. Because I think if you watch those fights and you look at how those fights went and you sort of look at some of the attributes that troubled David Hay in those fights, you'll have a pretty clear example of how Alexander Povetkin would not only beat David Hay, but he would, in my opinion, demolish David Hay. I actually think the fight's a bit of a mismatch, if I'm being honest. And I, I believed so back then, and I believe so now. Now, if you look at the Fragomeni fight, for example... Um, David Hay was getting absolutely battered at times, and, and what David what gave David Hay a lot of problems, and this is the thing about David Hay, and this is why, in my opinion, was one of the main reasons he decided to move up to heavyweight, because contrary to popular belief, David Hay actually, with his fighting style, was more suited to taller guys, and that's why when he fought the likes of Klitschko and Valoev, he was able to survive in those fights, you know, he, even though he went, you know, he lost the Klitschko fight clearly, he was able to get through the fight and survive it without taking a whole lot of punishment, you know, he never really got beaten up in the fight, and that's because when he's fighting a taller guy, he's able to linger on in the outside, he's able to move around, he's able to feign, um, have his hands down and, and slip punches with his head movement, draw a lead from his opponents and make them overextend, and he's able to work at a slow and steady pace, and, and, and jump in from the outside. However, when David Hay was fighting somebody shorter than him, who's aggressive, come forward pressure fighter, he would have a lot of problems because then he himself would have to work hard and, and exert himself. And Devin, D David Hay never had great stamina. And that is why, if you look at those fights, you look at the Carl Thompson fight, he was able to walk down and stop David Hay. Uh, and, and David Hay was absolutely gassed, even though he had a lot of success early on in the fight. He got walked down by just a very straightforward, come-forward pressure fighter with good power, good volume, good stamina, and a good chin. Um, it almost happened against Fragomeni. He actually almost got stopped in that fight. In fact, the only reason he won that fight, in my opinion, is because Fragomeni just um, was walking onto shots like an idiot, you know, and that's why he ended up um, not really capitalizing on the success he had against David Hay early on. Um, when David Hay fought... Um, when he fought Mormek, sorry, um, Mormek was having, again, a lot of success just coming forward, he knocked David Hay to the canvas, uh, you know, dropped him, he, he was beating him up at times, just by coming forward and applying pressure, and making David Hay work, and David Hay had to really summon up uh, everything in his power to catch Mormek coming forward and win that fight by knockout in the seventh, um, had that fight gone past the seventh, there's a good chance he might not have been able to pull out the victory, um, if you look at the Chisora fight, which happened a few years after at heavyweight, it's a similar situation. Now, David Hay won the fight. He won the fight by an impressive knockout. But again, Chisora is a fighter who has very little defense. Um, you know, he was just plodding forward in the fight, just applying pressure, having some success. You know, he bloodied David Hay's nose. Uh, he had David Hay blowing a little bit. But David Hay, once again, was able to summon up the energy to land a knockout blow. You know, he was able to drop Chisora, then dropped him again and got the stoppage. My point is, if you were to look at all of those fights and how they went, and then take into consideration who Alexander Povetkin is. Now, Alexander Povetkin has those attributes, okay? He is a pressure fighter. He is a guy who comes forward, right? He is a guy who has stamina. He is a guy who can knock you out in the later rounds. But, in addition to all that, at his prime, he had a very good chin. Okay, Povetkin was never dropped before fighting Klitschko, right? In the in his prime, he had punch resistance. You know, he wouldn't have gone down against Dillian White and AJ, in my opinion, back then. Um, it, it wasn't until after the Klitschko fight that, that his punch resistance started to diminish. But back then, he had a very good chin. But not only that, in addition to all that, Povetkin is a very patient fighter. He's a fighter who's measured. You know, he's a fighter who will throw feints and setups. You know, we saw in the Dillian White fight how skilled Povetkin was at setting up a knockout. You know, he threw the jab, dipped to the left, as if he was going to throw either a right hand over the top or a left up to the body. So Dillian White was prepared for that. But what Dillian White wasn't prepared for was the left uppercut through the middle, which is, of course, what Povetkin decided to throw. And it was the perfect shot. It was an absolutely clinical knockout. Um, if you look at some of Povetkin's other highlight knockouts, for example, like... The first knockdown against Andre Varshik, where he has Andre Varshik on the ropes, uh, dips to the left, just like he did against Dillian White, except that time 
he slipped the jab of Varsic and threw the right hand over the top. So Povetkin is a guy who sets up his knockouts. He is a very, very technically um, proficient knockout artist, a sharpshooter, a very accurate puncher who sets you up and walks you into shots and, and knows how to get the knockout, who can fight inside. Right, he's not just a big puncher like a Derek Chisora who who will go in there and swing. No, David Hay, David Hay would have to be a lot more um, technically prepared for somebody like Povetkin. So while Povetkin is a pressure fighter, while he's come forward, while he's a little bit shorter than David Hay and has shorter arms, he also has a um, considerably better technique and considerably better boxing skills. Because let's not forget, okay, David Hay was never the most technically proficient fighter okay he always had defensive flaws he always had um questionable punch resistance Povetkin had great punch resistance in his prime and Povetkin also had a, a much more extensive um background in combat sports you know Povetkin was a a, a, a decent high level kickboxer and uh, in the amateurs Povetkin was an Olympic gold medalist okay so he was Olympic champion he had a lot more of a established and successful amateur career than David Hay did David Hay had a decent amateur career, but it had nothing on Povetkin's amateur career. So Povetkin, to me, brought so much more to the table than David Hay. And he, in my opinion, would have knocked David Hay's spark out. Um, I think he would have done the exact same thing to David Hay as what he did to Dillian White. I think it would have been a similar fight. Now, David Hay would have a puncher's chance. David Hay is definitely a considerably bigger puncher than Dillian White. And... Um, Definitely hits, all, you know, he throws much faster punches than Dillian White too. But David Hay, to me, was just so defensively limited, so technically limited, didn't really use his jab much. Um, his right hand would often be thrown um, while he's completely off balance. He, he would often throw himself off balance with the right hand. Um, you know, he, he would often, um, he would take too long to get going in rounds. You know, there would be rounds when David Hay was looking for the one shot to the point where he wasn't doing enough to win the rounds. Um, he got away with that against like Valoev, for example. But against Klitschko, that really um, came back to bite him in the ass because he really did, he, he just didn't work hard enough to win any of the rounds. He was getting outlanded and outjabbed. And some people would argue, they would say, well, David Hay didn't get as battered by Klitschko as, as Povetkin did, you know, because Povetkin was down multiple times and you know, had a, got a real paste in at times here off of, off of Klitschko here. Uh, but but I think that the difference there is just stylistic. You know, when, when Klitschko fought David Hay, Klitschko was the aggressor. Klitschko held the center of the ring, despite all the talk about Hay was going to come and knock his head off and all that and take the title. Klitschko was the guy who put the pressure on Hay, held the center of the ring, got the jab going and outboxed and outfought David Hay. Now, where, whereas Povetkin fought Klitschko, it was the other way around. It was Povetkin who was the one coming forward, holding the center of the ring, trying to make a fight of it. Whereas Klitschko um, realized he couldn't fight that way against Povetkin. You know, he couldn't fight the same way against Povetkin as he did against David Hay, because he might have ended up getting knocked out with one of those left hooks. So Klitschko had to be a lot more tactful, and he had to hold, and he had to lean, and he had to spoil, and he had to push, and he had to just do whatever he had to do in order to slow Povetkin down and make it more his kind of fight. So, to me, I don't really think it's fair to look at those fights and compare them and say that because David Hay didn't take the beating that Povetkin did, that that means that he's a better technical boxer. I don't believe that at all. If David Hay had tried to fight the way Povetkin did against Klitschko, where he's coming forward and applying pressure, David Hay would have got knocked out in a few rounds probably within the first four rounds, because he doesn't have the kind of stamina or punch resistance that Povetkin had. The fact that Povetkin, despite being leaned on and thrown around the ring for 12 rounds, was able to go the distance and have a little bit of success in there is a testament to his resilience and his courage. Resilience and courage, which I don't think David Hay can personally match. Now, David Hay has some advantages here. He has faster hands than Povetkin. Uh, he hits harder than Povetkin, considerably harder. But I think Povetkin hits hard enough and is fast enough to catch David Hay much more regularly than somebody like Carl Thompson was or somebody like um, Chisora was or John Ruiz or Monty Barrett, who also dropped David Hay. You know, any anybody who was able to catch Hay and stun him, I think Povetkin would, would be able to do so better. And um, I think he would have knocked David Hay out. I, I would go with Povetkin 
round 7 to 12 in, in similar kind of fashion to what happened to Dillian White. I think Povetkin would eventually set him up for the knockout and, and would, would walk him down and, and stop him. I really do. So I'm going to go with Povetkin by by a knockout, uh, by a brutal knockout in the later rounds. That's how I think this fight would have gone. And it's a shame this fight never happened because I think it would have been a fun one to watch. I really do. And I, I do think Povetkin would have been the winner and it would have surprised a lot of people at the time. So yeah, I think Povetkin would have won this fight by a late knockout. Just an interesting fight to talk about. Um, let me know if you want to see more um, fantasy fights like this. Check out my other fantasy fights in the playlist. I'll leave a link in the description section below. Thanks for watching. God bless.